Today's topic, intuition. This episode of Awkward Anthems is brought to you by Microwaves Everywhere. Is your superpower knowing when food or drink is sufficiently heated? You'll love Microwaves Everywhere. That soup's probably done, I bet. Still got it. Subscribe today and we'll throw in some burning sage. Because what good is a useless superpower if it's hijacked by bad energy that doesn't serve you? Your popcorn is ready. I'm not superstitious, but I am a little stitious. In a world filled with information, choices, and constant distractions, there exists a powerful force that guides us from within. That force is called intuition, and it resides deep within all of us, just waiting to be harnessed. Often in seemingly useless ways, when logic and reason fail to provide clear answers. It's 68 degrees, and there's a 30% chance that it's already raining. It's a quiet wisdom that whispers to us, sometimes surfacing as a feeling, an instinct, or a subtle nudge. And occasionally it manifests as a seemingly useless superpower, as evidenced by this community poll, which shows that 49% of you have one and 16% of you find it useful. I can press a button insanely fast. How fast? So what is intuition? Intuition is the ability to know something without analytic reasoning, bridging the gap between the conscious and the unconscious parts of our mind. Or in layman's terms, a spidey sense. In a world filled with noise, your intuition is your inner guide. It's our compass in the chaos. But what does science have to say about this? Can intuition be measured? Well, we know this much. Intuition operates through the part of our brain that involves memory, learning, and emotion. It's called the hippocampus. Not to be confused with the hippopotamus, that's a different beast. In addition to the hippocampus, intuition also operates through our gut. There's a reason they call it a gut instinct. It's our second brain. Yeah, did you know that? We have two, not one, two. Math. How lucky are we? Everybody dance now! That sinking feeling in your stomach might be cluing you into something important, alerting you to an unsafe or toxic situation, for example. It may show up as a flash of clarity about an important decision, and something as fleeting and non-scientific as a hunch may actually involve an entire network of neurotransmitters in our gut. And the response time is so fast you can feel it in your body before any degree of conscious awareness enters into the experience. Which is wild, but probably explains why very sensitive people can make themselves physically ill through stress and anxiety. <sighs> what is my life? The gut-brain connection makes it possible for emotional experiences to register as gastrointestinal distress. The body keeps the score. Great book, highly recommend. A 2016 study attempted to measure intuition by introducing a technique in which subliminal emotional information was presented to subjects while they made fully conscious sensory decisions. Researchers asked student participants to look at a screen of tiny moving dots and determine whether the dots moved toward the right or left side of the screen. At the same time, Time, participants were shown imagery designed to inspire positive or negative emotions. A puppy, a baby, a snake, and a gun. Oof. Participants only saw these images through one eye, but they didn't know they were seeing them. They viewed the dots through a mirror stereoscope, a device that allowed researchers to block those images from their conscious awareness. So maybe science can explain some of this, but outside of a lab, it's fascinating to consider all the practical ways that intuition can manifest. Sometimes that flash of insight that seems to cut through the fog of our minds can be the difference between life and death. <laughs> Scaredy cat. Yeah. Ah! Ah! Ooh, spooky. Maybe I can add some creepy music to this. According to this Redditor, his intuition clued him in to what was possibly a close encounter with a predator. He writes, A few years back, I was hiking in the mountains with my wife, a friend, and our dog. About an hour and a half into the hike, I started to feel uneasy, like everything was too still. I chalked it up to it being winter in the mountains, but paid a little more attention to my surroundings. A few minutes later, my dog started to act very tense and started herding us all into a tighter group. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up, so I turned our group around to head back to the parking lot. The whole way back around every bend or turn in our route, I found mountain lion prints and slide marks in the snow that were not there on the way in. I'm convinced we were being hunted and the lion was circling us, waiting for an opportunity. Boy, that escalated quickly. 
At the time, the writer couldn't pinpoint the source of his fear, but he knew intuitively that he should be on alert. In retrospect, perhaps he was able to point to the physical evidence that his subconscious was responding to. The sudden sense of quiet in the area, the dog hurting the group, his hair standing on end. It was as though his hippocampus was screaming at him, like, yo, we got a problem, and I ain't lying. Okay, okay, I hear you. <laughs> But I have to tell you, Awkwardians, that in doing research for this video, I found several examples of what seemed to be a different kind of intuition. A kind of gut feeling that by circumstance does not describe the subconscious perception we've been discussing up to this point. There are many stories out there of people simply knowing they needed to act seemingly without any evidence from the physical world around them that could be directly tied to future events. No subtle clues from the environment. Nothing they could later point to and say, ah, that was cluing me into something. They're true knowings that seem to have an almost otherworldly quality to them. Listen to this much more modern tale of intuition that involved averting catastrophe. Didn't happen to me, but one of my father's colleagues, he's really close to our family and we often meet up. He once had to go to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for a business trip, and his flight back was connecting through Beijing. On the day of his flight, he felt as though something wasn't right because the flame of the lamp he was using to pray went off. Now he's religious, but not exactly superstitious. So on a regular day, he'd just have lit it back up and continued his prayer. But on that day, for some reason, he thought something was off and he decided to delay his trip back. And thank God he did, because his flight, it was the infamous Malaysia Airlines MH370. Now this story had a physical event, a flame going out. Whew. Ow. But that's not tied in any way to a flight. A similar story helped this user possibly avoid disaster. True story. In college, I went to a convenience store across the street from the dorms, and there were two ways to go. One was basically half a block through this dark, creepy little alley. The other was well lit, but because of fences and buildings, it was three blocks. Keep in mind that this is college, so my lazy ass doesn't want to walk that far just to go on a Doritos and salsa run. I went using the shortcut, and no problem. Got my Doritos original flavors, Tostitos medium strength, strength salsa, and some Mountain Dew. It's weird how I remember this after 25 years. I browsed the 7-Eleven for a few minutes and chatted with the clerk, because why not? It was a Saturday night and I wasn't doing anything. I leave the store and start to go towards the alley and stopped. It was the weirdest thing. It was like my brain was the captain of a ship and my body was the crew and the crew mutinied. I literally could not move forward. I tried again thinking, what the hell? And it was like my body just went into open revolt and would not take my orders. I didn't see or hear anything unusual, but I was thinking about playing computer games while eating and drinking junk food. I just told myself, oh, all right, we'll go the long way, with some internal disgust, and I cruised away at a higher speed than usual. Not running, but faster than I typically walk, even if I'm eager to get junk food into me. I made it safely back to the dorm and didn't think much of it. Next day, I went to lunch in the cafeteria, and there was a local paper discarded, and I read it. In the police blotter, there was a mugging in the alley that involved the knife wound and the victim being hospitalized. It happened maybe 10 minutes after I would have gone through there. Weird, right? Whatever it was, I'm sure he was relieved that he listened to his gut. All of these stories are a perfect illustration of the inherent gifts that intuition holds for us if we're paying attention. Gavin De Becker, in his book, The Gift of Fear, states, Intuition is always right in at least two important ways. It is always in response to something, and it always has your best interest at heart. In what ways has intuition guided you? Maybe it was a career choice, a spark that led to meaningful connection with a partner or a friend. Maybe it's even saved your life. Tell me in the comments. And until next time, awkward and out. A puppy? A bacon? What? <laughs> That's not right. I meant to say baby. Bacon does sound tasty though right now. A puppy? A bacon? Oh, Jesus. A puppy? A baby? A bake? Ba I'm just gonna go fry some bacon. I don't know what I'm doing tonight.